We're going to cover quite a lot in this part, but our main goal is to create a new file with some content in and have this pushed to our GitHub repo so it appears here. Now, if you've used FTP before to upload files, think of it as creating a file and then uploading using FTP. Although with Git, we have much more control, more security and more flexibility. The first command we'll look at is git status. Now at the moment I'm within the hello world directory and the one file present is the readme file that GitHub generated earlier. Now if we run git status, this gives us a message telling us that our current branch is up to date. Now origin just means the remote repository and master is the current branch uh, and we only have one. We'll look more about uh, branching later, so don't let this put you off. Now we also see nothing to commit working directory clean. That's simply because we've not added, removed or modified any files. So let's dive in and create an index.html file and see what happens when we run this command again. So there's the file created and we'll run git status again. Now you can see that we've got an untracked file. Now what does this mean? Well, let's pull up the file status lifecycle on the Git website and take a look. Now at the moment we have an untracked file. An untracked file is a file that hasn't been staged and all staging means is to tell Git we want to include this file in our next commit. Commits are sometimes referred to as snapshots by the way and this terminology is often interchanged. Now what we need to do is add this file using git add. So let's head back over to here and we were going to say git add and then the name of the file. So git add index.html. You can also use things like an asterisk if you want to include uh, everything or a folder name. Now let's run git status again and see the difference. You can see that we have a tracked file now which is ready to be committed. We also have the option here to untrack the file and if you're wondering what head is just think of it as a pointer pointing to the current branch which is master. Uh, we'll cover this later though. Now that we have a tracked file we can commit Now this won't add it to our repo so what exactly is committing? Well committing means taking all the changes that we've added and recording them. Our name and email address will be recorded against each commit and you can commit as many times as you want before you push up to your server. So let's commit this change. Then we'll modify the file and we'll commit again to see how we do this. So we'll do git commit m and we pass the m option in here to give a commit message. Now make this descriptive of your change so it helps other people understand what you did here. So I'm going to write created index file. Now you'll see a summary of this commit including any additions and deletions uh, in, inside of files. In this case we didn't actually add or remove any content, we only created a file. So both of these are uh, obviously zero. We also see the name of the current branch and the commit checksum. Now let's run git status again and you'll notice the difference. There is absolutely nothing here. Now our index.html file commit is ready to be published to our origin which is github but we don't see it in here because we haven't changed anything again. As soon as we add some more content to this file, rename it, remove it or do whatever, we'll be back to the start, the ability to stage and commit more changes. Now we create commits so we can then roll back changes if we need to. Now think of commits as little steps along the way to build something or add some more functionality with the ability to go back in time to a previous point. Now I'm going to add some content to index.html and we'll see how this affects git status. So I'm going to add hello world in here and I'm going to save that. So if we head over to our terminal and run git status again, you can see it says we have a modified file and these aren't added to our next commit. So let's add the file changes using git add. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to use an asterisk this time. Now running git status again gives us confirmation that our change is staged. So let's commit again. We'll do git commit um, I'm going to enter a message, so modified or add hit hello world to index. Hit enter and we're done. You can see we've got one insertation. So you're probably wondering where you can see all of the commits that you've currently made. Let's have a look at those commits using git log. So I'm going to type git log here. 
you can see an initial commit here, which was the one made by GitHub when it created our readme file. Apart from that, we see the two commits that we've made along with the details of the commits. Now, the git log command is extremely powerful and can output logs in a variety of different ways. For example, we can use git log and then the pretty flag, and we can set this to one line. And that shows a compact version and a number to limit the amount as well. So we can say something like two, uh, sorry, two. Now, if you need more flexibility in how you output commits, go ahead and look up because there are a ton of options available here. OK, so we've made a couple of commits. The last thing we need to do is actually push them to our repository. As you can see, if we head over to GitHub here, these changes have not been reflected in GitHub at all. It's exactly the same as when we started. Now, let's push our changes. I mentioned origin earlier, which represents the remote repository and master is the current branch. So all we do is git push to origin and we want to push the master branch. So let's hit enter. So let's go ahead and refresh. And you can see that that change has been added. We can also see the commits made in this section. If we just click on this and you can click on them to find more about the change that's been made. Another cool thing is you can leave comments here and you can also do comments on particular lines as well. So we've now successfully pushed changes to our GitHub repository.